Thanks for Just Podcast. I'm Just Brandis, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share in each other's missions and help each other grow. Happy Wednesday. It is actually the day before my birthday, and I could not think of a better way to start my birthday off than with Aunt Mary Pat hey, joining hon. me. How are Happy you? Happy freaking birthday. Thank you. That's awesome. Now, listen, how? because you always seem to have a good time. How do you celebrate your birthday? Uh, party, party, party. Maybe like a shot of Fireball, glass of Franzia, a box yeah. of Franzia. You know, just get out there and go down to shore. And I'm in May, so it's warm out when I'm celebrate my birthday. Oh, so you're like ready yeah. to strip down and get Ready out. to go down to Wildwood, down the shore. Really? Yep. Wildwood? Why not places like Rehoboth? Or, uh, I go there too, but yeah. you know, the family's in Wildwood, so yeah. you want to see those assholes sometimes, I guess. Every once in a while. Every once in a while. And you, you actually talk about your family a lot. I do. Which I love. Bane of my existence. Yeah? You think so? I think so. Yeah. So what's your favorite story when it comes to your family? <clears throat> Like, I want to hear, like, a typical Delco story. Typical day in the life? Yeah. Well, um, so, you know, my daughter works down at Lou Turks, and we went to see her on her first shift. You know, she was dancing and stuff, so that's real nice. And me and Larry went out, and, uh, you know, we were partying, partying, partying. We drank a little too much and got all mm-hmm. all freaked up, and uh, we went down to Morty McGee's, and then I lost him. I was home, right? <laughs> And then I couldn't find his ass. And the next morning, I come out outside, and there he is, uh, face down, ass up in the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, my freaking God. Now, I remember a time where my parents had gone to, I'm going to say a Hanukkah party. It definitely mm-hmm. wasn't a Christmas party in my family. Gotcha. So uh, I, I guess my mother doesn't drink at all. Can you imagine? That's a, terrible. You would think with a child like me, she would have drank. I know. I know. What the hell? I, I got nothing. But here, my mother got out of the car. It was freezing cold outside. My dad was so drunk, she left him in the car. The next thing you know, in the morning, he's like laying down in the foyer of the house. Oh and he's God. like, I could have died of hypothermia, but she wouldn't pick him up. <laughs> is that is that something that occurs with you, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Uncle Larry all the time. Leave his ass in the car. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I love that, though. I love that. So we are here live at a Delco bar, and for most of you listeners out there, you know that in my past, I lived in Pittsburgh for about eight years. And when I first contacted you, Aunt Mary Pat, Mm -hmm. one of the first things I said was, I lived in Pittsburgh, and then once I moved here, I never saw anything like it. And if you've never been to Pittsburgh, the outskirts remind me a lot of Delco. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sports fans, the accent. But that's what? That's Steelers country, right? That is Steelers country. Yeah, we can't do that. They lost yesterday. Yeah, I know. And I'm You know who won? The Eagles. The Eagles on the... Oh, my God. That was such a great game. How'd you feel? Uh, I was felt good, so... I did a show yesterday, right? And I was doing my final song, which is called Nieces and Nephews, which is a, a dedication to all the people that have been supporting me and following me around, right? And I go to sing the song, and then everyone stands up and starts cheering. I said, I didn't even start yet. Thank you so much. And I looked up, and here it was. The Eagles won the game. That's why they were cheering. I said, use assholes. But it was good. The whole mood, the whole, the, you know. But uh, it's about freaking time. Yeah, I know. And you say friggin'. Fr- I say friggin'. friggin'. I'm trying to get the Delco thing down. Yeah, friggin'. Here. Friggin'. Yeah, two G's. Two G's. Mm-hmm. But th- I was pretty impressed, but they were, they're they slacking. They, so it's been an uneven season. You know, we start off strong, and then we lose, and then we're up, and then we're down, and we're up, and we're down. And they were down. I'm having heart palpitations all, you know, all friggin' season yeah, but long. they were down to the worst teams. That's I the know. Worst part. I was terrible. They lost to friggin' Miami Dolphins. I that know. was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. I just did a show in Miami, and the owner of the club apologized to me. <laughs> and he was a Dolphins fan. He's like, I'm a Dolphins fan. Nobody expected to win. He was like, I was embarrassed that we won. He said, I felt bad for the friggin' Eagles. And I that said, was, I know. That was pretty sad. It was sad. Like, I, I pretty much tossed away my Eagles jersey at that I point. Know. I know. I switched out for a friggin' Flyers jersey. Well, at least Flyers they're winning. do good, though. Yeah, they do. They do good. It's a good team. So, for, for many people out there, this is Delaware County, or what most people call Delco. Delco. But this is kind of like... This is like a country of its own. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not Philadelphia. It's not... Delaware, it's not Chester County, it's certainly not Lancaster County where I grew up. So, it, can you explain to me and to all those listening, like what Delco actually is? Because I feel like it's just a culture that most people should probably get to test out once in a while. Yeah, I think you should, you know, check it out. Um, so, Delco, I describe as its own friggin' country. 
Um, you know what I mean? You can drive through it. You can get there for sure, but it's nothing like it around here. You know what I mean? You got, it's, It feels like home. You feel good. You know everybody. You hate everybody. You call everybody assholes, and that's just how the, the mentality goes. And there's a lot of traffic in Dalco, too. There is. That is historically accurate. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? We just like to have fun, party, 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 and have mm -hmm. a good time. Even in the snow, which Even actually, in the friggin' snow. It's not snowing today, which they were calling for. And I could tell you, I spent 15 years as a teacher. Mm -hmm. I got paid nothing to be right 100% of the time. Why is it that these meteorologists out here I get know. paid a lot of money to be friggin' wrong? All the time. All the time. It's terrible. We were supposed to get all this snow today. I should be a friggin' meteorologist. Go, hey, it's going to snow. Wait, no, it's not. You know what I mean? Like, that's all they do. But then all these kids are walking around because all the schools let out early and there's nothing going on outside. Shit. Now, Back in my day, we walked 15 miles into <laughs> school in the snow up to our ass. Now, still went. Now, did your, did your kids ever stay home a lot from school or was it i mean i'm assuming this was like back in like my day so my kids are 23 and 30 mm -hmm. so they would go to school and you know what i mean uh whatever they, then schools be closed and i said well just because schools are closed don't mean your ass is staying in the house get out there and play for eight hours you didn't make them it. shovel yeah shovel play in the oh. snow and stay outside <laughs> shoveling and playing are synonymous right? yeah exactly I said, go make some extra money for me. Go uh, shovel the neighbor's drive yeah. and all that. Well, hopefully soon you'll be getting out of this cold because you're going on tour. I am. I feel like, uh, are you, uh, do you feel like you're taking like a really long vacation? So I try to, uh, you know, I'm going to a lot of new places, a lot of warm places in freaking January. So I'm like real excited about that. But uh, I, I'm trying to make it some fun out of it too. Mm -hmm. So I'm going for a show, but uh, we're going to freaking uh, California, right? Never been there before. Going to freaking San Diego and LA. Very excited for that. And, uh, I'm going to drive up the coast and go to friggin' Napa and do the wine tour. Oh, that's going to be good. That's going to be good. That's going to be the most fun I don't remember. I can feel it already. Now, I know because you normally drink Fireball here. You have yeah. two beers. Like, I do. I'm pretty impressed. I'm double fisting today. There you go. I, I love said it. I'm a little under the weather. Might as well have two beers. It keeps the cold away. Mm -hmm. That's it. So w when you go up to Napa... How are you going to handle that? Because you're not much. Uh, do you drink wine too? I love wine, so I'm actually a, an avid uh, Franzia fan. <laughs> so as long as the wine tastes as good as Franzia, I'll be fine. Oh, I, th I think it's going to be great. Yeah, I, I think I'm, it's I'm be sure great. the alcohol level is going to be jacked up. In places I think like so. Napa. I'm gonna. I want to go to the friggin' Franzia winery tour. I think yeah. that'd be fun. I don't oh, know absolutely. where that is. Uh, uh, who knows? I have to Google it. You'll find it. Yeah, I'll find it. Maybe Italy. You probably. You should yeah. do a world tour. Maybe a Carlo Rossi uh, winery tour. <laughs> there you go. Nice table wine. <laughs> I love that. I love <laughs> it. No, that, it's going to be a great time. Is there any place that you don't get to go on your tour that you really, really want to go to? So we're, we plan dates in uh, California, Boston, Michigan. Uh, we've already done Florida, and that's been a, that was a party hunt. Uh, I want to do Texas, I think. Mm -hmm. I want to go down there. Really? Friggin', yeah. I want to go down there like the asshole I am in my Eagles gear. Go to friggin' uh, Austin or Houston. Like, what's Cowboys up, country. What's up, assholes? You know what I mean? Um, I would love to go to... Wait till uh, after this week's game. Yeah, exactly. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes from there. I want to go to Arizona. I think mm -hmm. that'd be a fun party time. Colorado. Yeah. And uh, I think Seattle's on one of our places we're looking into, too. So that'd yeah. be fun, I think. Well, they just had, you know, and, and I know you're a, a huge sports fan, but, you know, they had the army navy game here in philadelphia the other day did you I get saw to go, that did you go to that i didn't get to go i was stuck working at the acme but mr trump was there yeah well i didn't go to that yeah sorry i'm surprised he was still standing after yeah that. i don't know uh, he didn't even shake the player's hand no that should have been done mm -hmm. i think that's kind of rude well you know what you know that's when it happens there's an asshole in everybody <laughs> in every family <laughs> in every family well, Aunt Mary Pat, I can tell you right now, I am very, very excited. I will have to come see you when you are local on yes. tour. And um, I know that you come to a lot of other spots. You're in Delaware. You go to Jersey. You were just in Jersey yesterday. Yep. And uh, you're having a great time. But I'm so happy that you spent my birthday with me because oh, I cannot uh, think of a better way to do it. You know, we should have had shots of fireball. We should. I mean, there's still time. Yeah, we still got time. <laughs> We do. Yeah. Now, I want to uh, say thank you guys uh, for having me on, Jess. I really appreciate it. spending your birthday with you. Um, my next local show is at the Ardmore Music Hall on January 9th, so make sure you check it out. It's going to be a good time. Great venue. Uh, all the music we're doing, uh, telling a couple stories and some jokes. So That's fantastic. I cannot wait. And for all of you out there, I'm going to have all of Aunt Mary Pat's information on our website. Please go to dwjphl.com for that information. And you can find it in the show notes here and wherever you get your podcast. But we will be right back. Stay tuned. The Drinks with Jess is making a big splash. 
It's time to join forces and step outside of our comfort zones. There is strength in union. It's time for people to tell their stories and make a difference. That is what we aim to do. The Drinks with Jess podcast is where we bring the LGBT community and its allies together to share each other's missions and help each other grow. Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Bringing you amazing guests that cover a wide variety of topics and are inclusive to all cultures and communities. Join us on this amazing journey. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Drinks with Jess podcast. This is Jess Brandish, your host, and this is where we bring the LGBT community together and its allies to share each other's missions and help each other grow. In the first half of the show, we were here with Aunt Mary Pat, and now we are here with Troy Hendrickson, the comedian behind Aunt Mary Pat. <laughs> and I am so happy to finally meet I you know. because we tend to like run around Cross in the same paths. circles <laughs> just at different times right, with different right. drinks. But, you know, I, I look at this character, Troy, and first of all, you're hysterical. Thank you. And when I have watched your videos and, and everything that's going on, to me, Aunt Mary Pat is like kind of like Grandma Yetta from The Nanny. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> you know, or like Medea. Yeah. You know, it's one of those characters that you're bringing that local flair of a town or of a type of person like to the forefront yeah. so like where did all of this stem from so uh the, the whole idea behind the character was essentially uh just me making fun of my mom so uh when the eagles won the super bowl it was kind of like perfect time because i've always been doing these videos and silly characters and making fun of my mom you know and you know she just really enjoys it um <clears throat> but after the eagles won the super bowl i called her up because i knew she'd be excited i was like hey are you excited and she's like yeah i'm really excited I was like, why are you whispering? And she goes, I'm at Modell's buying up all the gear before they charge the double the prices tomorrow. So I was like, oh, my goodness. So I, I put on the lashes in the way. I didn't even have the name for the character yet. I was just making fun of my mom and, like, um, this kind of type of woman that she is. And then um, it, it took off from there. And I, uh, I was very surprised that people responded so well. But I think, like you said, it just kind of, like, resonates in so many people, even though they don't know my mom or this character it resonates with them as a feeling of a per- person that they could know you know what i mean oh absolutely how does your mom feel about this so when it first <laughs> happened my she, mother would kill me yeah well she was very upset she was everyone's gonna know that's about me and she was all upset and then um you know once it started taking off she really really enjoyed it and she would go out like she was at my she, i had two sold out shows in delaware last night and mm-hmm. she came out and she was like yeah it's about me yeah, he's making fun <laughs> of me yeah thank you so much like, she's so proud she couldn't be you know a yeah. bigger supporter yeah. Well, it's, it's just so funny because, I mean, it it really is from from all the people that I have met now that I have lived in Delaware County, like mm-hmm. it's spot on. <laughs> you know, the accent, the yeah. I mean, I, I just I still try and comprehend what people are saying half of the time. Right, right. And you just have it like down pat. Now, are you this popular in Delaware, too, since you actually live in Delaware mm-hmm. and not? Delco. Yeah, so Delaware is a big market for us, like North Philly, uh, South Jersey, like all these places that kind of are um, the similar type of uh, you know area. And then, um, like you, you meet people um, all over the country that kind of um, either know of uh, you know the Philly Delco mm-hmm. thing or um, may have lived here, or, like passed through, and it, you know we're we're branching out to all these new places, and it always um, surprises me like how many people you know, follow this character and, mm-hmm. you know, no matter where they are, even if they're not from here, they, they still, you know, love it. And it really do, makes me happy. Do you happy. think that they, they can relate, like they can look at their parents and say, yeah, I can <clears> see my mom being like this or my yeah. aunt being like this or even my dad being like, I would love to see like, like the dad character. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I think that would be hysterical. We, uh, we, um, like people like may not understand the accent if they're not from the area, mm-hmm. but they still get that kind of like, uh, mom, aunt, you know, mm-hmm. mentality, sensibility from it, and I think they, you know, really enjoy it. Just makes it feel like home because mm-hmm. it's kind of like, you know, my mom was like that growing up, and like I exaggerate a lot, but you know, it's still kind of like true to my life too. Right. So, so pretty much a lot of the stories that she tends to go over are things that you've heard or have been around while they were happening. Yeah. So I would say like. 
fifty percent are just like scenarios that I've you know either encountered or you know made up. But uh, I would say like the other fifty percent are like direct stories. I call my mom every day. We talk every morning, you know, on my way to coffee. <laughs> so do I. And I ask her about her day, and then she tells me things that happen. She said, "You're never going to believe it. I was uh, at the dollar store, and the wheels locked up on the cart, and I flew right into it. Guy pulled me out of the cart, and like I, those are like stories that I work into my routine. Then wow. you know I get directly from her, and then she's like." so embarrassed the first time she hears it but then she you know as uh, really well, all, all of my morning phone calls consist of what's happening in politics today and listen to what your father did this time yeah yeah are, are usually the stories that i tend to get but that's awesome so now you're actually you know you've put aunt mary pat and delco on the map and now you have like this great christmas album yeah thank you um which is is doing very well on itunes yeah. now how was it going into that recording process like I'm, I'm assuming that you you created the lyrics and yeah so um with the christmas album like we started doing music uh last year um i worked with this wonderful producer uh, named kendall king mm -hmm. and uh he's the one that produced both albums and all the mm -hmm. music and he's so insanely uh, talented but he's like i love Aunt mary pat i love the character it reminds me of my mom he's like i want to do a song for you so we started talking pretty soon after i came out with the character mm -hmm. and then we got uh, the first song doing good which came out which was like insane to see like the reaction to that um and then we did a successful kickstarter um, so we got donations from fans. We got about uh, $5,000 worth of pledges. Wow. And uh, that funded the whole process of making the album. And, you know, Kenny would present these lyrics and, like, uh, send me, like, clips. And he's like, what do you think about this? And, you know, we really worked together well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, I want to do a Christmas album. It's always been my dream, like, to kind of do it. And now I have the opportunity to. And... Um, First, we were coming up with names, mm -hmm. and I was like, "It's right! It's, it's so obvious! Like Merry Friggin' Christmas! Like that's perfect." <laughs> and then um, there's two duets on there, so it's mm -hmm. one with uh, the asshole daughter Kelly character, and then one with the Rita Marie and Mary Pat's best friend character. Right. And so, uh, you know, they um, both of those amazing artists, uh, Ian Morrison and Brittany Marie, mm -hmm. um, helped with the lyrics and you know creating these songs and bringing them to life. And um, we did a Christmas show last year at taboo in mm -hmm. center city and that's kind of where we came up with the idea for this so it was like a year in the making and right. then uh we it finally came off you know came off the ground and mm -hmm. we had this all this fun stuff like larry got run over by a reindeer i know i like saw silly. that that was great <laughs> yeah that um that was like a last minute addition it was a last minute idea and i um i was having so much fun with it because i was like it's just it's so you know to get people's reaction like all these little quips and mm -hmm. you know references and places in the song mm -hmm. that you know if you're from the area you'll get and you'll you hopefully get, enjoy it like yeah. mentioning marty mcgee's in well, there I mean, yeah, if you're from delco you've been there so you know right. you know <laughs> absolutely fun. so now are you going to get to use these songs on your tour because you are going on tour you're, you're starting your tour mm -hmm. so right now we're on we are doing a, a regional tour uh so it's a christmas tour mm -hmm. and we're doing all the songs from the album on the tour okay. um and then next year what we go on our national tour so um we're going to bring the songs from the uh talk of the township album mm -hmm. and then uh work in hopefully we can do a few of i mean i'm i'm, I'm christmas all year long like i will i'll, I'll oh, sing geez. it all year long yeah i know i'm really extra with that but um i would love to keep it going you know mm -hmm. we'll probably do it for the full year and hopefully bring the christmas songs back around again for okay. in a national stage yeah. so and, and then once and then once the season's over it's time for all the prides which you've actually gone to a lot of the pride events yeah. which is fantastic and i know i missed you in delaware last year mm -hmm. um but are, are you looking to still continue like the pride circuit and do as many as you can? Yeah. So I, I mean, I previously, um, I did, well, I still do, um, drag and I have a drag persona called Miss Troy. So that's how I got really started with Delaware pride and, uh, Philly pride. And we performed at Outfest this year. We headlined, um, on the main stage, uh, as a Spice Girls tribute act. And it was so much fun. Um, but last year, and this year, I brought Aunt Mary Pat to Delaware Pride and I had a 30 minute set. Right. And it was just so fun to see, you know, because it's an all age event. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and the hard thing about doing, you know, uh, the Aunt Mary Pat characters, a lot of the, sh the events are in bars or places you have to be 21 and older. Right. And we have a lot of young fans. Like, mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see people send me videos of their, of their kids singing my songs and uh, mimicking me and, you know, impersonating me and stuff. So the fact that we are able to do these like all age events and these festivals, it, it, that means the world to me. That's we get a lot awesome. of you know teenagers that come up that are struggling with their own identity mm -hmm. and uh, coming out, and uh, they just give me a big hug and you know thank me for this character. And I'm like, thank you. 
Like, thank you for your support. And, you know, I, I see, I, I read every I message. That. So. I love that. <laughs> and, 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 you know, to have that type of role model and to put things into such a comedic sense yeah. and put it out there in a way where, you know, parents would love for their kids to see that. Yeah. And I think it rings true because, you know what? We all have our families, and yeah. our families all have their Quirks. craziness <laughs> and their stories and their humor. And I think it's wonderful that you put it out there. Where can everybody, number one, find your album? And number mm. two, where can they find all your tour dates? So, uh, Facebook page, Aunt Mary Pat, Instagram, Aunt Mary Pat, Twitter, really Aunt Mary Pat. Um, we're launching a website uh, this week, so it'll be uh, the AuntMaryPat.com because someone bought AuntMaryPat.com. I don't know. I'm not getting into it. Um, They're going to so, steal your identity. Yeah, they are. Right? They are. So uh, the AuntMaryPat.com launches, and it'll have all the tour information. All the music is streaming on every platform, so Spotify, Am Apple Music, Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and you can purchase the album uh, on Amazon and iTunes uh, right now. So is it, it's just a labor of love. It's, it's, it's so fun for me just mm -hmm. to be able – I, um, as a little kid, always wanted to be a singer, and then I can't sing. So to have, you know, be able to do music as right. a comedy way, so it, it really makes me happy. So I'm glad people are See, I think it. you should bring Aunt Mary Pat and Randy Rainbow together one day. I love Randy Rainbow. I, I can't. I yeah. love him. I, everything he does is amazing, and I would I would love to be. We actually performed in uh, a few of the same venues. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was like, it's pretty cool, because I've been following him for quite a while. Yeah. Well, maybe one day they can make that happen. And for all of you, I'm going to have... All the links to Troy's album and the website where you can find all the tour dates. I hope you have a wonderful night. Troy, thank you so much well, for joining you. me. I appreciate it. For all of you out there, please make sure you go on to all of your outlets to listen to this show and all the others. You can find all the archives links on DWJPHL.com as well as our social media links to connect with us. And make sure you check out BrandisEnterprises.com slash B hyphen the hyphen voice for all of the other shows on the Be The Voice Network. Have a good night.